I grew up in a wasn't a, like a very safe neighborhood. But to me, a nine to five is soul crushing. The first scene, I had to like walk on the beach, fully naked, <laughs> <Yeah. No way. laughs> full frontal nudity and stuff like that. And then I had like a very hard sex scene with like a thirty-year-old older woman. Yeah. No so way. that was like that's okay, your that, first that's baptism, baptism Ooh. by fire. <laughs> Salute and welcome to the Romaniac Show, episode 10. We have another guest. We are glad that you came around. Forza are going to introduce him to us. Yes, we have Toriale Akbari. <laughs> I, I think it's weird that I'm saying your full name, isn't it? No, but I was just waiting how you spell my name. Okay. <laughs> uh, did I and say it, it was right? wrong? It was wrong. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. How do you it's, say it? It's like Toriale. Toriale. Akbari. Akbari. Okay. Yeah. My mom is going to be angry with you. <laughs> She's gonna well, not serve you. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> mother. Um, but yeah, we have a uh, Toriali Agbari, who is an actor Agbari. here in Romania. Um, and welcome. Thank you so thank much you so for joining much, us. And I would like to add, thank you for promoting Romania. Yeah, you are sure most welcome. Such a lovely thing to do. Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. And you do it like with such passion and such, such a nice way. It's we need it. We need it. Yeah. yeah. Well, we're yeah. glad. We're very glad to hear that. That's straight off the bat. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. I gotta give you props. I gotta. Yeah. I've got a question. Your your name, Toriale. Okay, so my name is Afghan. Okay. Because my father was from Afghanistan. Mm. My mother is Romanian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they met like during the 70s. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm. And yeah, I'm actually half Romanian, half Afghan. Okay. okay, that's an interesting combination. I could, all, yeah. I mean, you could tell by looking at you, there is a mix yes. somewhere in yes. there. Yes, yes. And I mean, the name is like, yeah, yeah. So I'm half Romanian, half Afghan. Yeah, but yeah. the name means something in uh, Persian. Tell us. They speak. Uh, Turialai means courage. My mother okay. used to think it means something like uh, black or something, but then I googled it and uh, I saw that it meant written differently, but it it was still Turialai. Mm -hmm. Because my name is is with an O and a U, but yeah. on the internet it was just a U. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it meant courage. Okay, I, I, I know that in the in the Persian language there is a lot of me the names all have a big meaning and exactly. they love to give it like that. Yeah, but I think it's also in Europe like names yeah. means yeah of means course stuff, yeah. yeah I think it's always better that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, That's cool. It they should have like some significance. And uh, Akbari means uh, the great one, like Allah Akbar. Ah, uh, okay. So it's yeah, Akbar yeah. from that Akbar. Okay. Mm. I never knew that. I never knew you Akbar meant the great one. Yeah, so it's, like it's like God the great Allah one. Great. Yeah, God Allah the greatest. Yeah. Allah Akbar. Okay. Yeah, but I'm not. Um, I'm not a Muslim, or a, I wasn't. In fact, I I don't think I was. I don't know how I was bap. I don't think they baptize mm -hmm. Muslim. children. Do they Muslims. baptize Muslims? No, no. They right? So. They don't. No, but no. do they have their own ceremony that is like there, there yeah. baptism? There must be baptism. Yeah, they have like a priest or something. Mm -hmm. mm. So I know that happened. But mm -hmm. I'm not sure. But I wasn't like uh, baptized mm -hmm. as a Christian. So I know I'm supposed to be Muslim, but mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm not religious. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Were you born here? Yeah. Okay. But I at some point I was like, I was a Christian because all my friends were. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I had to like, you know. In Romania then, yeah. Yeah. So, so I thought I was a Christian. Yeah, but then I was like, I don't have a. Who's my godfather? I was like at some point. <laughs> That's how you found I knew, out. I, I knew my sister had a g godfather because she was baptized as a Christian, if I'm correct. And then I was like, Ah, okay, this is my godfather. But then I realized somebody told me from my family that no, that's not your godfather. That's your sister's godfather, because you're a Muslim. And I was like, Okay, <laughs> uh, is your sister? Is she? Uh, your full sister, or yeah, 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 yeah. But she was Christianed. Ah, okay. she was baptized as a Christian. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is weird. But that's a whole story with my father because yeah. he came from Afghanistan during the um, uh, Russian war with Afghanistan okay. in mm -hmm. the seventies. It was a very bad war, and he kind of like left the country, mm -hmm. and somehow he ended up in communist Romania, no. which was worse. <laughs> it, w it was kind of worse. No way. Really, they didn't like take well like communists don't take well like immigrants and yeah. stuff like that so he had to like 
at some point run from the country, Romania. Mm-hmm. And for three years, my mother didn't see him. And he wasn't there when my sister was, was born. born. Yeah. Oh. So I have like this weird card. Like, uh, like how do you say it? When you send someone, like they used to do it in your Postcard. Country. Exactly, yeah, like a postcard. And I have it home. And it's written by my father in a very broken Romanian, telling my mother, I miss you, I'm fine, and stuff like that. And he mm-hmm. came like three years after. No uh, way. Where was he? Where was he? I think he was in Germany. But to be honest, it's it's a whole story because my father yeah. was such a such a character because he was very uh, s- scary, like not not mm-hmm. scary, but very strong, like very. He had that uh, gravitas of a, this yeah, aura. Of, yeah, yeah, and he was. I remember when I was a little kid, and he would like walk naked, like bare chested in the mm-hmm. house, and he had like a lot of scars on him. Really, mm-hmm. so he had this really weird background. Like mm-hmm. he had, he went through a lot. How how did that impacted you guys? Like how how much are you connected to that? Especially now growing older. My father, first of all, my father died when I was very young, oh, like okay. when I was eleven or something. Mm-hmm. But up until that point, he was like a uh, very respectful figure, mm-hmm. almost like to the point of being afraid of him. I was like very mm-hmm. scared of him because mm. he wouldn't smile a lot. Mm-hmm. But he had a ten, uh, like a sort of a tenderness. That you kind of see in like fathers, mm-hmm. so he had that. Yeah, but he was pretty much a very very somber yeah. person. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> but I I think that's amazing. You know, yeah. I, I think that's one quality that brings up really good children, both got boys and girls, to have a father that, in some way, first of all, you have to respect them, and in some way, they are as a child, you fear them a little bit, a lot. I fear them like because that keeps you in line. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, and it also I remember because I I grew up in a wasn't a, like a very safe neighborhood. It was it was kind of like a here in Bucharest. Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pantelimon or where? Uh, no, not Pantelimon. It's Drumul Tabere, but okay. it was okay. at, at that back point, then. It was yeah, yeah, back then it wasn't like very safe, and yeah. you had yeah. to, like I grew up. I saw a lot of shit. I mean, mm. I saw mm. people beating each other to a pulp. Like yeah, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. It was crazy, and to have like a father that everybody feared. Was he was like yeah. when he would like get down from the car, get out of the car, and people he was very like uh, he had a suit all the time on him, oh, mm. that's so and like the bigger the bigger guys. In the I'm imagining your dad yeah, yeah. Like some superhero. Something. Yeah, no, no, you you could say that, but he was very like you you wouldn't like go at him, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So I ho- I was very protected from that point of view. Like nobody would say I was the kid of the Arab, mm-hmm. which is funny because he wasn't an Arab. He didn't like Arabs. Yeah. Mm. And uh, I was I was safe, and there's a lot of legends about him. Like even now, when I go back to the hood, <laughs> the, 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 the the people that are still living there, they, they tell me a lot of stories about him. Like oh, hey. some weird ass stories. Like he had some money in a suitcase, and he had to uh, like uh, hide it at someone <laughs> because the communist police was looking after him and stuff like that. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, that's sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's it like a crazy. movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no, because at some point I want to do a documentary about uh, about him. Oh wow! It's, so it's 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 like a my way of like meeting him, knowing him better, because mm-hmm. I didn't mm-hmm. know him very well because I was a child. I yeah, had no idea. I had, so this would be like a dream project to just yeah. interview people and just see the different perspectives they had on him. So mm. you so to you paint a picture of exactly him. yeah you paint yeah. a picture yeah, yeah wow. that sounds great but he had also side, like some dark sides on him mm. he was like because I remember talking to a friend of his and he told me he was like a, he was like a fighter he he would fight a lot with people mm. if they I mean he wasn't a diplomat or something he was mm. like and I I have some videos of him like old videos and they're very haunting because like he's at this New Year's Eve party. And he's just sitting at the table. Everybody's dancing and having fun, and he's very serious at the table. And you could see on his face that he he went through a lot in his life. Mm-hmm. Like imagine running from your country because of a war, leaving your family behind because they had all of them had to like go different places. Yeah, and just like surviving in communist Romania as an immigrant, and then running. In Germany, because the police, the communist police, would like find you and deport you. He had a friend that was deported, and the guy died in the war, back home. Wow! Oh no! So way. yeah, 
that's another podcast anyway. Yeah. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Enough about him. No. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah that's, that's crazy. crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's insane. I can't imagine. I can't even fathom how how difficult it must have been for him. Different times. Yeah. yeah. There were different times. Uh, and they had different struggles. I mean, we're lucky. Yeah. I would yeah, say like, so as well. Yeah, we're lucky. Yeah. How how did it start off when we changed the topic to towards your acting? How did that uh, start when you were young? To me, Or when I was young. Mean? Yeah. Because I had like, I didn't have like a, how do you say, like a, a, my v the vibe, the atmosphere of what I grew up in, that didn't exist. Like mm -hmm. what you saw in, on TV and in movies, it was unapproachable. It was like, these are gods or something. The, mm -hmm, the, the yeah. people that make movies and that are in movies, it's it's, it's out of my world. Mm -hmm. And you did, I didn't have like uh, somebody to tell me like, oh, you can do that. You can mm -hmm. actually study that. You can do stuff mm -hmm. like that. So it took me a while to realize that th times had to change. Like, of course. Mm -hmm. So I could, so, so I could see that I could approach this. I could do this. I mm -hmm. could like, so I was a late bloomer. I was like, when I was 25, I just decided I was, fuck this. This really? is what I want to do. What were you yeah. doing at, a, at that time? I was just working like, uh, I, w I worked a lot at a clothing store. Mm hmm But I could have like improved there. I could have had a job, but to me, a nine to five is soul crushing. It's horrible to work. I didn't want to work like that. Like mm -hmm. do the same stuff every day. Every day, day then get life. a get a better position, a better job. And I'm not a very I'm not like uh, financially inclined. I don't I don't have like a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I can do it uh, uh, with uh, not so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, but I like reading. I like doing stuff. I like interacting with people. I like expressing myself. Mm -hmm. So acting made sense. Plus, I love movies. Mm -hmm. So for me, movies are like, they were my education when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Like I would see a movie and I would I would learn concepts, full-on concepts. Like, I don't know, friendship. I would see a coming-of-age story and I was like, oh my God, this is friendship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You have to be loyal to your friend. You have to help your friend. So movies did that for me. And did you grow up thinking that if there was an opportunity in the back of your head, were you really, were you wanting to be an actor then? I think so, yeah. I think I had it because I was very, not to be, not to be modest, but I was very charismatic as a child. You can, you can tell. Like yeah, I was, <laughs> yeah, but I was, uh, and I was very, very witty. Okay. Was, like, very witty, funny. what is that? Like ah, quick, okay. yeah, humor. yeah, yeah. And I was like doing that in front of a lot of people. Okay. I had that. And I would be like quick to to do a joke to be, and I was, I was kind of empathic for my age. I was like, I, I wanted to listen to people's stories, mm -hmm. like any kind of stories, and tell my own stories. Mm. So when I realized that acting could uh, could be that, is when I I started to like really reflect, like what do I want to do, mm -hmm. in regards to storytelling. Yeah, and then I realized, okay, I can I can lend my body, my voice, my The, the, my whole life experience to that, to telling stories. Mm. It makes much more sense than to just like, I don't know, be a DOP, which is a director of yeah. photography or whatever. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. And then you just, how did that then start? So you yeah. went to an acting school? I don't know, like, like anything else, which you have no idea, you just, just do it. You just go yeah. find, because I'm not uh, formally trained. Mm -hmm. yeah. And because I started kind of late, I had to like find classes. Mm -hmm. private classes so i went to that to see okay first of all yeah there's one thing to want something yeah and there's something but i felt like i could do it mm -hmm. i kind of felt like i had something for it mm -hmm. so i had to go and see if i have it and mm -hmm. i was terrified i was like so bad how was how was like the first like initial audition <laughs> ah the auditions were terrible they were like <laughs> i was like okay so i have to do this now okay <laughs> yeah. so you have to smile It was very bad. What was the thing, first thing that you auditioned for? Do you remember? <sighs> ah, yeah, I remember actually. I, I auditioned for, it was actually good, a good audition. I went with my girlfriend from that time to, she was auditioning for a TV show which was about some football guys, something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It never got made or something, but I remember the casting director told me, hey, you look kind of like what I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. You want to come in for a for mm -hmm. casting? And I was like, 
fuck yeah <laughs> and yeah, i true. was nervous and stuff but i had like a uh, courage mm-hmm. i kind of went at it you know mm. so i always had that and i always want I, i always wanted to like improve and just do stuff mm-hmm. so i didn't i was anxious and and nervous but i would still go i would still mm-hmm. not let that like hold you back yeah Yeah, yeah, that's basically going out of your comfort zone. It's always, yeah. you know, and people, the ones who succeed are the ones who push through that fear and just go and then you see where it's going. Exactly. Mm. And acting is just that. It's yeah. every day, it's a grind. And every day you have like to do different stuff mm. of which you don't really have control. Mm. So you have to like manage that. Mm-hmm. The anxiety, the nervousness, the pressure fucking terrible it's like oh. it is it the is. pressure i can imagine yeah, yeah. no it's hard. especially when you're um do you do a lot of theater things yeah but to me theater is not that uh stressful as acting in film yeah when but you're okay. with a bigger cast but yeah but not no it's just me because mm-hmm. i like films more so mm-hmm. when you like something mm-hmm. the pressure is bigger you're okay. like okay this is what i want to do yeah As opposed to theater, because I I never wanted to do theater. My first acting uh, teach no, my second, kind of my mentor was telling me you should do theater, because you have to do theater, because mm-hmm. it's the best way to improve. It's like okay, and to me it was kind of easy, because theater is more on the acting side, as opposed to film where you have to like, there's a lot of limitations like the frame limitations the. Mm-hmm atmosphere the you have to do a lot of stuff but you can get away with stuff mm-hmm. so on acting you know editing yeah mm-hmm. if i don't know your voice is bad in one day they you, they can you can do sound again yeah yeah you have a lot of takes yeah, yeah. a lot or change the angle if you have a exactly. second where so you have like a lot of stuff that can make like a bad day of acting look amazing yeah like i saw a lot of stuff that was like Okay, this is clearly an editing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's clearly he, he wasn't having a good day. Yeah, <laughs> no way. I, I did a lot of acting when I was a, a young guy, um, and I did a lot of theater. And I didn't get to experience much um, film or like commercials and things like that. Those were the things that I really wanted to do. But I would assume that in just the commercials that I've done, it's like you said. There's a lot of takes. And it's very hard for me to get in and out and in and out of character like yeah. so many times, which is why I felt so much more comfortable, even though I didn't like it as much, doing theater work because it was just continuous. Yeah, and you're like, if you do the prep right in theater, you're kind of like, there's a certain relaxation in knowing that you have prepped. Yes. And that there's like a straight, you kind of have a plan Yeah, mm-hmm. what you want to do. And it's just on you. Yeah. Nobody's stopping you. Nobody's telling, giving you feedback. You just do it. Mm-hmm. So there's a certain freedom in that, mm-hmm. which I liked on th- in theater because I did theater, and uh, it was very fun. It was very liberating. Yeah. But what I didn't like is that it's it ends. It it's not on take. It's not on film. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's you just, just for the moment. To, yeah. And to me, that was like. W- I feel like it's sometimes it's wasted work because mm. mm-hmm. you, you you prepare a lot. You like you you go places, yeah, and then it's over and it's, that's it. You know the audience is like eh, or whatever. It's it, <laughs> it's nice. Like people come to c- came to me after plays and they're like, oh yeah. my god, I believed everything you did, such an amazing stuff, and then then it's gone. I'm yeah, like, oh my yeah. god, I worked for three months on this shit, and now yeah, it's, it's yeah, gone. that's the, I, I I understand that totally. The main there is a very huge high with theater work. Exactly. Very, very huge high, especially whilst you're doing, whilst you're acting. But I think with um, like film work, it's, man, it's very tough. And, and tedious. Also, it's very tedious. And some most of the time you don't even know you're, a lot of times you're like, what am I within doing? Within takes, you're like <laughs> going over your lines. You're like, you didn't prepare fully, the changing yeah. things a lot. But the high that you get after watching it once it's completed after a you're year or shocked. something, you're like surprised. You're like, "Oh my god, this this is what happened." Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, but but you can also like uh, in film. 
I didn't do a lot to film mm-hmm. because I think we don't have like such a big industry here. Yeah. So to like reach the top, you have to like uh, struggle mm-hmm. and grind. So that's the work you have to give it like I don't know twenty, thirty years at least mm. to like establish yourself as a prepared actor. Yeah. I think so. I'm what eight years in or something. I'm when I had I was twenty five. So th- now I'm thirty four, like nine years or so. But you have to give like four years, like formally training or whatever training you have. So you mm-hmm. have four years off. W- w- you learn stuff, yeah, and then you put yourself out there, and you do the small stuffs. You know, you do mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. small parts and stuff like that. Yeah, and you keep grinding because nobody's gonna give you like a role in a yeah. leading film. When you didn't do like I don't know ten years of experience, mm. why should they? Even if you're talented in film, it's not about talent as it is about being like a well-rounded actor. Mm. Like people should feel that professionalism. Okay, yes, is it that? yeah, yeah. You have to be uh, very professional, and you have to like they have to count on you. That, mm-hmm. uh, like to feel you like okay, yeah. you did that, you did that. I can count on this guy. Yeah, yeah. he's good for the part. He's uh, he has good acting, but can I work with him? Yeah, I think that's important in, in most of those kind of uh, jobs. It's the same also with the sports people. You know, the talent is exactly. good for the one moment, but uh, if you have like a very important game on and you need someone for the 90 minutes to be really exactly uh, like consistently good, mm-hmm. then you rather go for the experience. Exactly, people. and I didn't knew that at first because I I had a talent for it, mm-hmm. so I had something because I'm I'm not I don't have the um, problem that most actors have in which i i can't be theatrical mm-hmm. i'm never over the top mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i i just don't have a theatrical bone in me mean theatrical meaning not in a bad way in a in a bad way because you have like over the top actors but you believe them yeah mm-hmm. but i'm not theatrical like oh, 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 and then yeah I, 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 we can also tell because i mean for the human more you know a lot of theater people me yeah. not but i met some or we met some also and they, you have a different vibe. Let's say that you are, you're more like an actor, like the theater guys. They, they are just the whole time joking, yeah. the, whole, the time. whole time, exactly. really over the top. That's yeah. it. Exactly, yeah. Which is nice because that shows that you have courage. Yeah. And you need courage, and you need like a sense of ridicule with mm-hmm. this business because you really you can't afford to be like self-contained and just you have yeah. to be outgoing. Yeah. 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 But. It's bad when you're like too much. Yeah. For film it's terrible. For film it's terrible because yeah. you have like actors who you put a camera on them <laughs> they go and crazy. they're like Yeah, you can see every small yes, movement. Exactly. I remember my first um my first audition tape. I, I was I think I was like 14. I was going in for this one commercial <laughs> random and um <laughs> I felt my my agent filmed me and then I looked back and I was all the time going like <laughs> and I was just trying to express like small and she was like look even if you're sad the emotion has to be so natural and you can't I know, I know. you and have I to get rid of that in your head that you have to be like no I'm so sad like, <laughs> yeah. yeah because the first thing in your head you're like okay so I have to I need to sad. show to yeah. sad yeah I have to be seductive yeah. yeah yeah, and you're just doing faces yeah. yeah so that's that's the struggle that most actors have when doing self tapes and going to auditions and I never had that because mm. I wasn't formally trained. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they have like a style of training in formal schools. Mm-hmm. They're like, they tell the students that they're like amazing and they're like, like mm-hmm. grab the scene and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I was like trained just, yo, be natural. Or yeah. like, I, I was just, and I, I got it quickly. Mm-hmm. I was like, I know what I, what kind of acting I want to do. Mm. So I had that. I had like a, a sense of what acting should be like, mm-hmm. and it's a it's it's kind of a healthy healthy point of view, because mm-hmm. I I like acting like as a reflection of life, mm-hmm. like I want to see life. So if somebody tells me like, okay, you have this scene, so I'm gonna read it, see what I understand of it, and then I'm just gonna do it first normally. I'm not gonna try and add stuff. Yeah. I'm just gonna like go through it and see what clicks in my head. Mm-hmm. And just do it as I go along, mm. and that translates much better on film, on camera, whatever, than adding stuff like uh, outside of myself. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like physical stuff. Like that there's time for physical stuff. Like a voice change or um, I don't know, a tick or stuff like yeah. which you can add. Mm-hmm. It's called co- uh, we say corporalizare. So like in English, what is it? How like is it? a b- bod like uh, the body language. But mm-hmm. you okay. add it further along. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yeah. Is there is there a certain type of of role that you often get due to the fact that you are like that? Like an uh, art <laughs> like, like like <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I was lucky because uh the things I want to do I kind of g- they they come my way. Mhm. And I like edgy stuff. Like I did a sh- my first like big big role was a very edgy uh, role. I had to play a guy that has like like a loner that lives in Bulgaria at the seaside and an old lady like an old lady not an old lady like 60 year old woman comes to the seaside and he meets this woman and he has a relationship with her mm-hmm. so that's an edgy stuff because I, uh, I, I was like 30 and she was like 60 something okay mm-hmm. so it was like a very hard shoot to have in on your first big part because I had to like the first scene I had to like walk on the beach fully naked (laughs) 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 full frontal nudity and stuff like that and then i had like a very hard sex scene with like a 30 year old older woman yeah so that was like that's your first baptism baptism (laughs) by fire job but to me a nine to five is soul crushing it's horrible to work (laughs) oh my goodness but the the kind of roles that uh, i want are like actually those roles Because it's, it's, it's also fun. It, it's also like you learn stuff. To go into that yeah. character is, yeah. it must be wild. And then I remember I, I had another audition and it was like, but I didn't do it. Which it's, That's kind of my only regret. Uh, I had like a, a role for a Muslim gay man. Oh. Mm-hmm. And it was very tough, but I got scared. Mm-hmm. I was like, Not because of the gay part, because uh, at some point in the scene, I had to cry. And I wasn't prepared. I, fe- I felt scared because I was like, like I'm not there yet. Mm-hmm. You can't cry on cue. I'm not that kind of an actor. Then I realized years later that that's not like, if you cry, if you have to like, in the script it says you cry, whatever. It's not the only way to do a scene. Yeah, You just go and do it and see what, like, what happened. Mm. And you give the director other choices, mm-hmm. other options that you have on the day. Mm. So I wish I knew that. But I was very scared. I was like, I just don't want to go there and you just not be able to do the job for the guy. Because acting in film is just you helping a director tell his story. Yeah. yeah. And I was very uh, young in the business and I was like, I don't want to fuck up the guy's story. Is that was, the pressure also, because you said before the pressure that you generally have, but it's more towards you, but would you say that it's also high pressure towards those people? Uh, meaning? Like like what? it puts a lot of pressure to not deliver what yeah, the yeah, director it's wants. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. that is the main... Yeah, yeah, no, it's horrible. Uh, you have that every time. Like Did you're nervous on acting. Like the first day is horrible. It's like I on my first job, I remember calling my girlfriend, telling her, I just want to run. Mm. I just don't want to do this. I was like super <laughs> scared. She would, she would tell me like, no, stay there. Just do it. Just do it. Yeah. And I, I'm, I thank God I did it. Did you have one one job where you messed up? Like where, where maybe... That one. Definitely. There's no way you can just do it perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like it's not a question of doing it perfectly. Mm-hmm. Like they, I told you there's, there's ways to like make it good. Mm-hmm. Because then after the movie, I was devastated. I, I figured I was, I sucked. Mm-hmm. And, but then I realized because after I did this movie and I saw it, I didn't like it because I was like in my mindset of telling yeah. myself that I sucked. Yeah, you, like you wanted to have had to look to be different. It turned yeah, out you, but you, maybe, yeah, yeah, exactly. But the people you, maybe liked you it. See, yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. But that, that's just what happened because... After I did that movie, I applied for a talent show, talent uh, program in yeah. Sarajevo Film Festival with scenes from that movie, mm-hmm. oh. and I was the only one picked from Romania that year. No wow. way! Yeah, so I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then when I came there, which was an amazing experience. Where where was it? I didn't. A Sarajevo Film Festival. No way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So imagine. I think I was the the only. I think I might be wrong. I might be the only non form formally trained actor that. Okay. Ever from Romania. Okay. That's that, huge. That, yeah. I mean, and film festival itself is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, and I met a lot of like young filmmakers and like established filmmakers. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know Inarito, you know no. uh, the guy that did the Revenant. What? Uh, okay. Like I didn't no meet way. him personally, but I I went to a workshop of his. Wow! And the guy that won the Oscar this year tr- uh, for Triangle of Sadness, Ruben Oslund. Yeah. He pitched his film in that year, and he won with that film this year at the Oscars. And so pitching means like he comes in front of an audience usually filmmakers or actors or whatever and he tells the the film mm-hmm. so i knew the film mm-hmm. before it came out so it was the whole experience was amazing it's, and it was like it's one of the biggest things and i remember telling asking the um, we had a mentor like an actress her name was uh, he is Nezada Bogdanovic and she, and i asked her like did you watch my movie and she said yes what did you think of it cuz i have a hard time liking it Mm-hmm. You were amazing. You were very good. That's why I chose you. And then I was like, "That's like what the fuck." Yeah. It's funny because everybody has their different expectations for um the character that you're acting in. They're acting as you have your certain expectation after just reading the script of what you want yes. to portray. The director has a certain when he's writing the script, he already sees what he wants as an outcome. And then you come in and when you're acting you can oftentimes what well, oftentimes you shift completely what they had in mind and you and they can like I actually like this way better I like this and to be honest uh, on second thought when i saw the movie i was like you know what i kind of did what i uh set out to do with this part mm-hmm. cuz it he was supposed to be this mysterious guy he, at the end of the movie you're like who is he like mm-hmm. who is this guy and seeing it like objectively after like chilling and like not being such an asshole with myself i was like i kind of did it and i did it in such a stress and such an anxious way that i thought like this was like 30 40% of what i can do mm-hmm. so there's a lot of room for improvement mm-hmm. and i can get so much better yeah. that's a, that's so a that was that was like for me it was like If that's me at 30 40%, imagine if I put in the the work yeah. to get to like 80 90% mm. and have relaxation and be just focused. Yeah. Was that would you say that was your favorite piece that you've acted in? No. No because it's it's uh I think uh in theater you do kind of your best work actually. Okay. Because uh you have like a lot of time to rehearse and like think about stuff whereas in a film you're like three weeks of rehearsals if you have them and a lot of things happen on set mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it's a lot of uh, it was a hard shoot because i had like struggles with the main actress mm-hmm. and not because of her it wasn't her fault because she had a lot as well mm-hmm. she had to like do nude scenes and she's like much It's, older yeah. so you know insecurity in actors is huge yeah especially like more on women because they're always like objectified and stuff like that. Yeah. Right? So it was a very stressful mm-hmm. shoot. But I'm glad Isn't I did it, you know, I'm glad I came out of it like yeah. alive. Mm. Isn't it also in theater that's a main difference or not? I mean, I'm not so much into that topic, but when you are filming for a movie, it's just a scene is like when you're on set for this one scene on on some market, you just play that in that day while theater you always repeat for multiple days always yeah yeah you have a lot of time to like fuck up yeah you have a lot of a lot of time to like see stuff like yeah. try stuff yeah or, or talk with the other uh, actors and be like look exactly. we, we should esta- do that different es- yeah establish re- relationships and uh, like kind of know the person you're working working yeah. with because that's an important stuff thing as well because you i don't know you have a tense scene scene sex scene have to establish intimacy no so way. beforehand as, as well yeah so it's know. that's uh, i did uh, rehearse for the movie but 
also the sex scenes which are uh, wasn't weren't like very uh, graphic sex scenes but they were like much more poetic stuff the director wanted some things whatever S- something like a director's view mm. point of view of how they how she wanted the scene to work but still it's a lot of like it's ridiculous because you have to like rehearse the intimacy and stuff like that and it's not comfortable mm. you know so yeah on theater you're like getting to know the person you're like seeing like building stuff mm. even if you don't like them you're like still accommodated accommodated yeah mm-hmm. with them mm-hmm. so yeah so if i would like s- i did a play called autobahn mm-hmm. and on paper it wasn't much and i told my acting co- my acting uh, teacher like this is not i'm not seeing a lot on page mm. and she just went well yeah you do it do some do do it special do it do something mm-hmm. but but do it like don't do something you would normally do don't play your strengths mm-hmm. and again that was a moment of like <laughs> like okay so i was just learning about using my body and using like uh life experiences and uh like seeing people around me mm-hmm. like i genuinely looked at people and see how they behave and the power of like a stance or like a a gesture mm-hmm. so i had to like forget the text and just build the character so i'm kind of a extroverted person mm-hmm. more like more more so and uh, i just wanted to, to play i remember going to a party and i saw this guy standing some on a couch something and he had like this posture and he was just like very s- straight and like very formal mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and i was like i'm going to use that and i'm going to make this guy a uh, hypochondriac okay. and i'm going to i'm going to make him like nervous but in a sense in which you see a nervous guy from his posture and from his clothes and i remember going like he's dressed formally but he somehow makes it look like he made a mistake like in his he's 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 dressed in a shirt but he has and he has the good pants the shirt is fine but somehow he makes a mistakes and he wears vans vans okay with, you mm-hmm. know Mm-hmm. So I was building uh, he has glasses but somehow his hair is like straight not curly like I have it mm-hmm. because he's trying to show that he's like a formal person. Mm-hmm. So you had I was building stuff. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't me. But I knew I had it in me. Yeah. I knew I had like stuff from the page in me. But I didn't make the guy like strong and um outgoing. Mm-hmm. I had to make him like and it was very good. I guess you had so much leeway with that character exactly. to do whatever you wanted. Yeah. Yep, you kind of do but you're afraid because the directors are very strict and you're thinking, "Oh my god, he doesn't want that. He's, he's <laughs> he has a way of seeing the character." Yeah. So now I'm learning that it's not like that. Mm. Like a lot of directors just they write it, but they're like, "Okay, I see it him somehow, but I'm not like uh It's impossible to like have like I don't know more than three characters and know them all that well mm-hmm. especially yeah. for even films where you have directors who write I mean they they write a film and they know who they want to play a specific role just based off the reliability of that actor or how well that actor can play many different roles and they're like look I have a I have a role of um of a hard guy I want Jason Statham to play him but I don't know exactly what I want out of yeah, this hard exactly. guy. And Jason Statham would do something like, "Yeah, that's well, I like that." Yeah, yeah, but even so even Jason Statham if you watch all his movies, he's a very good dramatic actor. Yeah. Actually. He's not just the tough guy. I think he went that way because of the his look. the popu- yeah, and the the because he's like there's an there's a thing with actors, they have like an archetype. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. The, he plays on that. Yeah, but if you watch I don't know Lock Stock and Two Smoking Barrels or Snatch, mm-hmm. you can see that he has like skills as an actor. He's For like sure. a very mm-hmm. good actor. Yeah. Like I I know I saw a movie with him London it's called and he's he it's a very good movie and he's playing opposite Chris Evans like Captain America or whatever. Okay. 
and the guy is amazing and it's not a a part in which he's like strong uh, and mm-hmm. um, like his mascul- masculinity levels are usually in the films are big mm-hmm. yeah. but in this one he's a guy that uh, he 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 can't uh, have sex he's impotent mm. and how and you're like oh weird? my god it is it has to be so weird to see an actor like this and in, in a movie like that but it's it? heart wrenching mm. like he has a scene like a monologue and he makes this uh, this scene in which he tells that he cannot have sex with women mm-hmm. yeah and it's heartbreaking and you're like okay this is Jason Statham he's the mm. guy that's like yeah. very how do you say viril we say viril he's like very manly and whatever yeah. mm-hmm. and he's like vulnerable and like and th- that's the first time i saw that kind of acting and i was like oh you can do that mm. even if you have like an art type even yeah. if you there there are actors there's levels to this game yeah for mm-hmm. sure i was like okay got to work more. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. What what were some some roles where you worked maybe with some famous artists or cast? Um let me see. So on like commercials and music videos, I I worked with a lot of uh, Romanian artists, like musicians, like Smiley. Mm-hmm. Okay, I worked nice. on a commercial with him. He's very nice. Uh Delia, which Yeah, yeah the we, one we, we saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and Joe, she's another art artist mm-hmm. uh, and she's n- very nice as well, but lately I had a small part in a TV show, a Danish Danish TV show, TV mini series, mm-hmm. and I worked with a director who won an Oscar. Wow. Oh, hey. Best in in 2024. I think you guys know the movie. 24? 2020. 2020. 2020. Okay. Uh, it's called Another Round, the movie, and it's with three guys that uh, drink alcohol to see if it improves their lives, and it won an Oscar for Best Foreign Film. I it haven't seen Where, it. Where Mikkel- is it You from? know Mads Mikkelsen? No. You sh- you definitely know him because he's like super famous, the actor, and he, the guy, um, the director directed this movie, mm-hmm. and he won an Oscar, and I was like starstruck on set. How is it like uh, being with people like I mean with other musicians and and famous directors is it It's demystifying. <laughs> it's like What does that mean? I like me, me uh, it's like there's a certain mystique on uh, people that are famous. Yeah. You're like they're doing art and mm-hmm. they should be some kind of way and But then they're, they're not. But then they're like Everyone. you and me yeah like they're, they're normal stuff. yeah yeah and they do stuff and they're some of them are actually like normal people like they can be fun they can be boring mm-hmm. yeah so it, it's sort of like ah oh, this is actually refreshing to see like yeah famous people being normal people yeah so it's just a it's just a cultural thing in which the media portrays them as these. yes that's always why they say you should not meet your heroes because in some people for some people then when they meet the person they're like wait the, p- the person is not what i expect it's just mm. normal but i ex- you ex- some people expect them to be super special and no it and was crazy, and yeah. i did the, when i was at sarajevo talent i had a workshop with a guy a director which which films i love he's he's pavel Pavik- pavlikovsky he's mm-hmm. polish also he won an oscar and we were in a workshop just the 12 actors just the group of actors because mm-hmm. the, the this talent uh, work uh, program has like 60 artists filmmakers screenwriters and we had just we had him for one hour talking about acting mm-hmm. and all my colleagues were like very nervous because they knew who we all knew mm-hmm. knew him but after he came into the room he was like a normal person like and he had he didn't know how he He didn't know a lot of like he, he wasn't comfortable talking to other people in a sense like oh I'm this big mm-hmm. shot director yeah well, he was like from the from the get go he was like uh, you guys should ask me because I really don't think I'm supposed to give you advice and stuff he was yeah. like very modest yeah but then I started asking questions because I was like I I okay I might be starstruck but I'm I, I'm still gonna just I want to know stuff. Mm-hmm. So I gotta know stuff. I'm mm-hmm. just gonna ask. Yeah. So I, there was like, from one hour of that workshop, it's like 45 minutes of me asking <laughs> questions, <laughs> just like interrogating the guy. I was like, "How did you do this scene?" Like there was a sex scene, and I was like, 
did, did, did was it hard was it hard to like uh, direct this this scene and then the other scene and he was like yes and no and yes and mm-hmm. and then when i met thomas winterberg and work work with him the i had a small part mm-hmm. it was two days of shooting and on page it was just one line and i was like well, of course i'm going to go to prague and just have fun there yeah yeah it's thomas winterberg is like <laughs> one of my fucking heroes I'm, yeah of course That was recently, right? It was yeah. two weeks ago. And he did a thing which led me to believe that he's like an amazing person. The The casting director told me, you got the job, uh, blah, blah, blah. We talked uh, mm-hmm. stuff. And then he, she said, uh, you have a message from the director and this is it. And, she, and he said in the email, he said, I know this is... Uh, no, he said, uh, I know this part is... You're overqualified for this part, but I'm very glad to have you on board and I can't wait to meet you. No way. Mm. And I was like, who does that? Yeah. Like the guy has has to shoot for six months and he takes time to like appreciate s- uh, such a small part of his Pro- big project yeah. to yeah. like take the time and say that. And I was like, of course, because the big, in my view, great artists are also very kind people and nice yeah it's it's a very it's very nice also because a lot of directors out there are not that kind i no. think i think it's in every it's in every single every single uh, job mm. yeah in a, yeah but in a way the the people that are not nice i kind of know where they're coming that they are coming from because it's stress like, yes yeah. exactly yeah. so if you know that if you're like smart enough wise enough to know that You could like understand it and just let's do the job. The job yeah. is yeah. what it, it's important. Okay, you might suck. You might suck in a in, in a context. Yeah, because it's all about context. Maybe that guy is the nicest person, like outside of the context of fucking shooting a film where you have like tons of people asking you questions. Yeah, like and ac- and actors most of all have a lot of questions. Mm. they're like oh, okay so what does my character do now and uh, but no i'm not gonna do that and you're like oh my god just sh- say the line mm. <laughs> sometimes it's just say the line say the fucking line mm. yeah and about thomas winterberg i was i was very nervous because uh i they flew me in like on a monday and i had like a monday t- tuesday I, ha- i had a free day and then i would uh shoot on the next day and the day after And just waiting for those those two days was like, oh my god, <laughs> fucking <laughs> time was not. And passing. I knew I had just one line, but it wasn't. I I felt like something is gonna happen on set. What was your line? I, uh, but it wasn't just that line, because uh, he wanted us to improvise. Okay, which is worse. Yeah, just like <laughs> we, uh, improvising, I think is the um, is the kryptonite for most actors, because they're like, know. what? <laughs> <laughs> no, give me text. Yeah. yeah, I'm just gonna learn it and no, stop it. Whereas I love improvising. I'm mm-hmm. just, I think it's uh, because I love it so much because it's so so much freedom mm-hmm. in improvising. But it's very very it's a very hard skill. It's another beast almost. So we got on set and I had like a a colleague which had a girl from they flew her from Austria, Romanian as well, and uh, I didn't get to see her in the hotel in those two days and i was like oh shit i didn't see anybody from the filming crew <laughs> so i need to see people i need to you yeah. know like get myself in there because two days of waiting and walking in prague i was like fuck so nerve-wracking and when they got us from the hotel i saw her and we got friendly in like one minute of like in j- the first time we met we we're like oh my god we're shooting with winterberg Do you like him? Yes, I love him. I'm so mm. nervous. And we were like friends in just one minute. <laughs> mm. And we got there and we were like, look, just don't 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 be a fan. Let's be professional. And like, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and he came shortly enough, because he's a, an amazing person. He came to us, he shook our hands, and he grabbed us like this, and the main ca- actress, and he, he said something in the lines of like, You're my cast. Mm. And he just he then he said Forget about the script. You're gonna improvise. We're gonna have fun. 
and if it works it works if it doesn't who cares and i was like oh my god of, of course <laughs> you want to have fun then you're like relaxed mm -hmm. you're like i have no reasons to be nervous yeah because mm -hmm. the guy was like he's not nervous Yeah. I, I I can express myself now. So surely enough, we shot for like eight hours or nine hours and we did a lot. Mm -hmm. So the text was like out the window. Mm. Yeah. But still nerve wracking. Yeah. Like still. <laughs> for sure. But it was a very fun experience and makes you, it, you build confidence from mm -hmm. it a lot. Yeah. Especially if you work with those people, it's always like, That's how we grow. And I think that's why I said before, it's like in every job, there are people who are more stressed. When, when, you, when you enter, it, if it's the set, if it's the, the, the locker room, if it's the yeah, dental clinic, you see the person and some are, when they are stressed or when they are perfectionist, they're right now in there. Yeah, in the zone. He, in the But zone. To tell you an interesting story about him, he would go to the monitor mm -hmm. and uh, he would see the scene. The scene would play out, whatever scene. And he would get angry on the screen. You could see his face. He was like, oh, fuck. and then when he came on the set to give uh, like instructions, yeah, he would change. He would be like smiling. And <laughs> so I was like, ah, okay, of course the guy has, of course, you know, okay. <laughs> yeah. of course, sometimes stuff doesn't work, but still you have to like, You have yeah. to know people. You have to change for them. Yeah, mm. and make it work because yeah, because it's his mm -hmm. movie. It's you got to make it work. Not just it's not about ah, it's not about ego. Yeah. yeah, it's not about me telling you what to do. It's me making you help me do the film. Yeah, and the other way around, me helping you tell your story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about film, because it's not it's not about the actor as much, because once they pick you, yeah, you kind of are the the best choice mm -hmm. they, they do a lot of work making yeah, yeah. you so of course at first you have to grind yeah you have to like improve to the point they're like shit this is the guy yeah mm -hmm. how Isn't how does that work for you do you work with an agency uh, uh, no i don't have an agent What? i just have to no, you do no. everything yourself yeah yeah it's very hard to get an agent here. like from here yeah Okay. Because I went to Sarajevo Talents and I learned a lot about networking there because mm -hmm. they teach you that there, here, not so much. So I, 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 that was a whole concept, networking. Mm -hmm. And I'm not bad at it. I'm, I mean, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But agents, it's, it's a different thing. It's much harder to get one. If mm -hmm. you don't do like a big, like a feature film. Once you make a feature film and it's like a supporting role, a bigger supporting role you might get one okay. but it's not it's i don't see so it as a bad thing i mean uh there there are ways mm -hmm. like for example i write to directors i just tell them i like your movie i see them first of all i see the movies mm -hmm. i'm not just like hey. I, I, li i love what you're doing yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no clue and i didn't hey, see it yeah blank yeah, I like yeah. Your work. so i watch <laughs> i watch the movies and i'm like and i don't write to like established people Yeah, because it make no, makes no sense. Because they're not gonna pick you. No, they're, you have to like look for your tribe, the people that are that are on the same step. Yes, as you. yes, exactly. yes. And you're like, and, <laughs> and honestly, the 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 shit I see is amazing. Like the, there are a lot of like young up and comers that make beautiful stuff. Mm -hmm. So even music videos, I saw some music video, and I was like, who di directed this? I'm just gonna write and tell them this is amazing. If ever you need an actor for something, mm -hmm. yeah, holler at me. You know, I mean, it, it's not it's not intrusive. It's mm. like showing showing love to yeah and interest people. and and if if the case uh, would be possible that both can benefit out of it, why not? Yes, and it does work. To yeah. be honest, because I had like a friend. Uh, I met her. I met her on a commercial and mm -hmm. she was doing like production she she's she was an up and, up and coming director and she was working on set as a first ad first okay. assistant director or mm -hmm. something and uh we talked and she showed me some movies and they were very nice they mm -hmm. were like like a lot of potential mm -hmm. and i told her at some point i i sent my work to her and i i said dude if you ever have like a part in which you might 
think I might be remotely good for it, just send me a message, give me a shot. Like, get me five minutes in a room on a casting. Mm -hmm. And surely enough, a year later, uh, a casting director called me for for a casting at her feature film. I didn't get the part, Mm-hmm. But you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. That's, you have to do that. Yeah. So, yeah. Also on commercials, I did that for for a part. And I wrote to the to a director. He did a very funny commercial here. And uh, he didn't answer back at that mm-hmm. particular moment. One year later, I got a job. I booked it. And I'm meeting the guy. And he said, dude, I remember you writing. I'm so glad you got the job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... It happened. There are ways. I guess that makes it a full time job for you then if you're reaching out. It's all it's the time. it's a full time job in a sense that beyond like improving this the craft, the actual acting, mm-hmm. which is hard, you have to do this as well. Yeah. You have yeah. to watch movies, you have to live, so you you know build upon your set skill of understanding characters. Yeah. Read books. You have to read a lot of like fiction and stuff like that because it's the best way to like imagine. Because mm-hmm. when reading a book, you're like the character, mm. so you have to do a lot of stuff like this. And it's, but it's nice. It's it's fun. Like I shot a commercial on Sunday with Yanis Haji. Really? Uh-huh. Yeah. And I was like, if somebody asked me like, how was your Sunday? <laughs> and he would, I would ask them, how was your Sunday? Yeah, I was b- barbecue, friends. It's like yours. I, I just had a commercial with Yanis Haji. Yeah. It's, it's, it's fun. And it <laughs> was very fun. You get yeah. to meet loads of different characters in this, in this life, I guess. Yeah. And it's fun. It's, you wanna, I, I love uh, life on set. I mm. like it. I did yeah. a commercial for uh, like something, mattresses or something. And I was in, in bed with a total stranger. Like we're like doing the scenes. And it, it's a, normal commercial that we had to like wake up and stuff but <laughs> between takes i would just watch uh the people on set <laughs> and they were like four guys from the set prop guys mm-hmm. and they're like big men like 40 year old men like with bellies and stuff and they were like one of them was like with a uh, iron he was ironing the bed and one of them was like throwing like fake snow <laughs> What the? (laughs) This is ridiculous. Yeah, (laughs) but it's 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 fun. It's like, why would I want a nine to five? I'm like, I'm willing to like grind and have. It's a hard industry. Yeah, and I I was lucky the last four months because I had like a small small part in that mini series. I had like four commercials. Mm -hmm. I'm uh, rehearsing for a play. Mm -hmm. I'm doing like stuff, but you can have like years of not doing stuff. yeah well it's very hard yeah and i had like a totally different like trajectory because i started in 2015 like i trained for two years bang i got a job in a in a movie which is a lot because after two years like people study for four years Mm -hmm. and they don't get a job in movies yeah but i was kind of like talented Mm-hmm. But it's not talent. I, do, I don't describe it. People say that it, it's talent. But I, I gave it a lot of like thought because I knew acting well done. So I had to like learn it to see what I want to do with it. Mm. So it's not talent. It's like you're doing the research. You're working. You're like watching movies. I, I watch like five or six movies per week. Like do every you, night I watch a movie. Do you think you... you you put in more work on average than than other people that are on your level. Uh, in a, uh, if you talk about like actual work and like rehearsing every day, no. But I wh- where I put more work is in this understand- passive preparation because yeah, you, that's what I get. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, I put the work in like understanding stuff. Mm-hmm. Like I read books, I read philosophy, I read psycho- psychological stuff, and so I learn about life. Because mm-hmm. basically, that's what you need to be a good actor. And to yeah. experience not just a lot of not just rehearsing well. and like, I don't know. It, you really need to build upon like a vast ex- life experience. Mm-hmm. So you have to like learn a lot. Like, it's crazy. I yeah. never saw it from that perspective. You have to meet a lot of new different yeah, types of people as think well. Think about it. You're like you're going to a casting and there's like 300 people, 
for a part, what makes you better besides the looks? Mm. It's it's you. So if you're not like interesting in a sense that you understand life and you see a different scene in a different way, you're more empathetic, vulnerable. You have to learn that. Mm. You have to learn to to translate on the camera, stuff mm. like that. And that takes like a lot of like uh, learning stuff about yeah. life and living life because, you know, you have to reflect upon what happens to you in life, not just live it. And you're mm. like, okay, so I went there. No, I stay home and I just sit and reflect. Like, okay, what can I learn from this? What happened? Mm. Like I would be home after shooting in Prague and I would write in my journal. Like, okay, this happened. Ah, okay, so I felt like this. I was nervous. Mm. Why w- was I nervous? W- w- you know, stuff like mm. that. And that's, I, I think that's work. You know, and you, when you're, when you do a scene, you have many options once you have like, you know, things to draw from. Mm-hmm. So you can, you can, you feel much more prepared as opposed to a guy that just rehearses, rehearses and does the mm-hmm. same stuff. And I think on a long run, that is much, much more Exactly. Yeah. And that's, efficient. A, and, and acting is something that you do. Yeah. For, 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 for yeah. your life. Yeah. Like you said, maybe you just blow up when you're 60, 70. Morgan Freeman. So man. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. It was Samuel Jackson. Yeah, yeah. Who is your favorite actor? I want to show us. Oh my God. That's Tell us maybe one, if you have one niche one and then your favorite Hollywood so actor. I would say uh, I'm a big fan of the actors that first established this type of acting, of natural acting, like Marlon Brando and uh, Paul Newman. You guys know him? Paul Newman. Yes. Oh my God, you're so, you know him? He's Marlon Brando. Ma- oh my God, you don't know Marlon. Yeah, we are. Okay, we are you're really so young, you're young. It's fine. Also, we are not, you so have to understand, we are not movie guys. Yeah, All yeah, the good movies, fine, we haven't yeah, watched them. So Marlon Brando, <laughs> at some point in the 50s, there was a certain type of acting. There was a, uh, there was a theatrical acting on screen. If you ever saw like old movies, mm-hmm. black and whites, mm-hmm. yeah. the acting was very over the top. It was, yeah. Uh, Slapstick. It was, yeah. yeah. And then, a certain type of breed of actors came that went full on. You you could see life as it happened. Okay. And this was the first actor that had that style. And he just re- revolutionized the industry and the, the, the acting, the type of acting. So everything you see today in acting, which is natural and uh, you believe it, mm-hmm. came from this guy. But he, he, it didn't come from him. He was the first like actor that like acted in this way. Okay. Was it was it also maybe I'm wrong that early in the time was like short term amusement the movies, and it transitioned more into telling the story of, of something deeper. Or was it also back in the time? No, the, the, there's amazing films, and amazing storytelling as mm-hmm. well in that in that time. Mm-hmm. So you got to see some stuff that like Casablanca. If you saw Casablanca. An old movie, but <laughs> it's 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 so it's never outdated. Mm-hmm. Some of them are. Some of them you're like, what the fuck is this shit? No. Yeah. But some of them are like amazing. They're like just beautiful films. Yeah. Like I'm a big fan of films from the seventies, like the whole uh, American new wave of films, indie films that mm-hmm. were made, like Scorsese. Okay. Uh, Steven Spielberg as well. Yeah, yeah. He did Jaws. Yeah. Yeah. In that in those 10 years the amount of uh movies that were made because the artists were not influenced by studios. Mm-hmm. There was no input from the studios. It's amazing. It's like there's some stories there that you're like, "Oh my god. Wish I was in just, just acting in that period." Yeah. yeah. It's what crazy. Uh, what is your favorite movie? And also a Hollywood movie because we might Okay, know. so like a commercial movie. Yeah, uh, Lord of the Rings. Okay, but in a sense, I'm just I'm gonna tell you why. Yeah, it sounds weird coming from me because I I might sound like <laughs> a guy that doesn't like such movies. I love movies of all kinds, mm-hmm. like artsy films, uh, foreign films. I I can like name you German films. Have uh, you watched uh, Quiet on the Western? Front? Of course, yeah. I, I also read the book. Yeah. So I was very disappointed by the movie. Yeah, I was like. <laughs> they fucked it up <laughs> <laughs> the book is I cried during the book I read the book and I was like crying mm. 
Mm. And it's such a beautiful book. It's one of my favorite books. And when I saw the movie, I was like, ah. in a sense, I was like disappointed. But then I was like, there's no way you can adapt that kind of a book. Mm-hmm. There's no way they did the best job they could. And mm-hmm. still you can't like adapt such an amazing, it's such an amazing book. Mm-hmm. It's, it's So I was like, it's it's fine. It's okay. okay. It's, they, they did a great, great job. Yeah. And I, 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 I learned during, because I, I know the industry, I'm much more tolerant with bad movies now. I'm like, thank God you guys did it. At least. It's like, so hard to make a movie yeah in when you're like okay it's a bad film you learn from it Mm -hmm. but thank god you did it yeah you shot it you edited the stuff and you put it out there which is so so much courage in that yeah Yeah. this is what i uh, this is my expression Mm -hmm. and here it is like you don't have to like it Mm. so yeah but yeah uh, we were talking about the lord of the rings yeah Yeah. okay so i was uh, a small child small child i was like 12 2002 I think it came out Mm -hmm. and I was a very very bad teenager I was like (sighs) hanging with the wrong crew and stuff like Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. so I was very bad my mom knows so and I had a cinema in my neighborhood called Favorit Favorit, and I didn't like movies that much during that time because I was busy being a asshole teenager Mm. (laughs) doing bad stuff and stuff like that but at some point I was with a friend and we had some money and he said, let's go, let's go to the movies. So I was like, oh, okay, let's go. And it was Lord of the Rings and we came in like half an hour later. <laughs> so I didn't see, I don't know if you guys saw the movie. There's like a 30 minute prologue. Yeah. Yeah. Of which I missed. I skipped. Is it, it when, when, when he's with his friend at the lake with, is it that one? Which yeah. Lord of the Rings? But the wait, first one. The first, the one, first okay. one. Yeah. So the, the first one is like three hours long. First yeah. of all. The theatrical version is three hours. The director's cut is like four hours. And the thea- theatrical version has like, a, all of them have a prologue mm-hmm. in which they explain the whole the whole beef of the movie, I yeah. guess. The bad guy, who's the bad guy, who's whatever. I didn't see that because I came too late. And I remember coming in the movie in a way and coming out of the movie a totally different person because of that movie. And I, I, because I was a child, I was a teenager, 12 years old or something, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. And the concepts that are in that movie, beyond the cinematography, the acting. Yeah, it's ridiculous. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a world in itself. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember being impressed by that, but being more impressed about the relationships between the characters, like, Mm -hmm the Frodo character and the Sam character Mm -hmm. and the level of friendship, the concepts of friendship, the concepts of good versus evil and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. And I came out of that movie like, wow, what did I saw? Mm -hmm. This this is, I had to understand it and I couldn't. It was, I mean, that friendship, because I watched the movies very recently over again. Um, and that friendship I realized was something insane. At, at a young age, if you were watching that, it must be incomprehensible how, it's, it's amazing, how, yeah. how Sam can like really, he could, he was yeah, willing to he's live, selfless. Yeah. He's just like, it's, it's no, it's, it, it's amazing. You, and it had an impact on you as well. Yeah. So it's timeless. Yeah. Like uh, whatever the, the, the climate would be, the impact it has, a movie has on the zeitgeist is amazing. It's like, it's ed- educational. Mm, yeah. So I didn't have that. I didn't have a role model. My father died. Uh, I was a bad child, a bad teenager. So I didn't have like people to have to explain to me like concepts of friendship mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. And movies did that for me. So it was only natural that I would go in that direction in which I want to do the same. Yeah, I would like to like if w- even if even the Delia uh, music video. music video has impact on people, mm-hmm. and I didn't want to do it at first. The one mm-hmm. because I was like very, I was like a pretentious asshole. I was like, I'm not gonna do commercial stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and like I think I had a friend who said, "Shut the fuck up, just go do it." And I did. <laughs> I and I had so much fun, but I was so ashamed when I saw it the first time. Why? Because. It's a very it's it's a it's a bit cheesy. 
It it's is. on the cheesy side. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, oh my God. But I wasn't I, watching it back. I was like, I'm not that bad in a sense of a cheesiness. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I was because like, that doesn't match you. I don't see you as a cheesy actor. Exactly. Like, yeah. And, and I had that about myself. Yeah. But you shouldn't think like that. No, like, I think it was okay there, really. Yeah, no, it, and I, I feel very good that I did it because I learned stuff. You learn, yeah. like, even if you fail, you learn, like, what not to do. Mm. Yeah. So, and I would do, I, I, I did worse stuff than that. Yeah. Like music videos and commercials. What's the worst? What the fuck? I did a <laughs> commercial. No, I did a, I'm not going to say about music videos because somebody might see this. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to say about. You tell us after. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'm going to say about the commercial. I had a commercial for like a Arab country and I had to dance. It was a wedding and I was like. Yeah, <laughs> and I and I, and I, and and I was like, uh, the first take I was like dancing. I was like, "Fuck this shit! I'm gonna have fun. I'm gonna dance." Of course, it's an opportunity to dance. Yeah, I'm not the best dancer ever, but I'm just gonna do it. And the director was like, "That's amazing. That's perfect. I love it." <laughs> and then he would come, oh, the clients, man, the clients. They wanna like because it's an Arab country. It's like okay, I can do it less, and I would do it, and he would be. Oh, Sorry, less. No way. So and I was like, okay, less. And then he came like, and when I saw the the the, sh- the commercial, I was like, like like this. And it was pathetic. It was like, <laughs> but I don't mind. I mean, you have to like have a, you have to have like a, a sense of humor about this. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. It, it, and you have so less control. That's the thing as well. Yeah. If you, you have, if you go around like that, then you're never going to get a job because exactly you're a part in somebody's big project. And exactly. You, and you're you're the best you can be. Depends on how good of a job the other people do. That too. And also, I think on how good of a job the people who watch it evaluate it as. And exactly. if, if only error people see it, they will not look at you and be like, yeah, why exactly. is it not coming out? Yeah, yeah. They will they, see it say, oh, it's so normal, you know? Yeah, yeah. And if you would go crazy, everyone would, would think Yeah, that, so okay. it's a cultural thing also because yeah. like, they, they'll be like, oh my God, it's, it's, yeah. of course he dances like that. Yeah. But if you show it in like, I don't know, Germany, they're like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> 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 Did yeah. they do that there? Yeah. So, and yeah. How, maybe one last question. For you, uh, being half Persian, I would say. If it helps me. Or if it's... Yeah, here in Romania. How, how is that for you? I mean, you are... I mean, there are Arabic people. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I in the acting scene. For example, look, the, the part of the gay Muslim, that's because of how I look. Yeah. Uh-huh. So that's good. So you have yeah. that. But I didn't get a lot of opportunities because I look like... I also look Romanian. So th- for the Thomas Winterberg movie, they wanted a Romanian. Mm. And ah. I was kind of like surprised that they chose, chose me. Yeah. Because I don't look uh, Caucasian mm. Nelial enough. No. But you still do. That's you the still fun. Do. That's yeah. The, yeah. I th- one thing I realized, I was, uh, I once in my life, I was an extra here in Bucharest. La- last year? Two years ago? Last year. Yeah, and uh, I just, because Forza did it sometime, and I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, c- he, he told me. I think I remember, I saw something on your yeah. Uh, yeah. Instagram, and and uh, it was uh, sp- the the series uh, a Spy Among Friends. It just ah, okay, I, 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 yeah. launched, yeah. yeah. And for me, it was just a thing of trying it to, of to course, dive yeah. into that world, to just have it, you know. But did, you, did it not feel like demystifying? Like, did you... St- had some expectations about what it's actually no i didn't have any expectations oh, okay. i never thought about it before you know i i mean i love editing now since we it, the YouTube. was it like boring for you did it feel feel mm, like it the time would not pass for sure it was cold it was outside that was the thing where i was like this is ridiculous yes. for, for it, these it, 10 seconds exa- that's exactly the sentence that could describe what we do in a more like realistic way it's kind of ridiculous Mm. but if it's sometime when you see the final product and you're like you see a movie like Lord of the Rings you're like Ridiculous. that's the impact I that's th- the impact yeah. it has I think everyone that it's like with a lot of jobs I, I know a lot of jobs where I think people should s- do it once in their life like also in the healthcare direction same with acting to see how much work this yeah, is everybody mm. does a lot of yeah. work so you, you, you can't really as an actor go there and be like oh, I'm an actor I need this and I yeah. need that Okay, you might need like some respect. 
Yeah. Because you have to do something that most people on that set are unable to. Mm-hmm. You are an asset. But still, you have to like chill the fuck out and <laughs> say mm. the line, you know. Yeah. yeah. And and when I was there, what I realized, because it was a scene that played in Lebanon, that's also why I got... Uh, Cast? Yeah, you because like a, I'm okay. half from Algeria. Like my oh, really? Yes. I could see that. Yeah. Mm. Like, the thing is, only people from there see that. Doesn't matter where I go, when I buy shawarma, when I go to the bacha, they all speak Arabic to me, straight away. For but real? Yes. Like, I, I, I get that. Yeah, so but the, but other people, it's not like in your face, like this guy, you know? Mm. Um, mm. So, uh, when I was there, what I realized about the Romanian people, and I think that's not a lot of countries have that, they are very moldable. Like, Romanians have a type of look where you can put them into loads of different nationalities. I think so too. Yeah. For and sure. that is, I guess, plus the budget thing where they r- make some scenes in, in, in Romania. Uh, n- that would be a reason, but also it's money-wise. They shoot yeah, a lot budget, of... Yeah, uh, yeah. Sh- sh- they used to shoot much more because it's Yeah, the budget. Cheaper. You yeah. pay like yeah. 30 euros per person. Exactly. And, and also they have like a cash rebate something mm-hmm. when they shoot in Romania. But now that cash rebate got, scheme yeah, yeah. is like Yeah, with gone. Wednesday, isn't it? Is yeah, when, but also I think Wednesday just purely on a financial level, it's much cheaper to shoot. And you have a lot of options in Romania because you have a, like the seaside, you have mountains that exactly. are amazing. Yeah. You could like, because shooting a film is, you don't have to have the whole city in a certain way. Mm-hmm. No, you can yeah. go in the like old town and just shoot something like from the 30s there. Yeah. And you don't have to frame it like wide can frame it like yeah, on just the just once exactly on i mean we we have vloggers we know we know how yeah. to yeah. <laughs> excuse me excuse me yeah. Yeah. we know how to manipulate exactly. <laughs> fully exactly full no, video i see that <laughs> i can see that yeah, yeah great yeah. yeah i mean we could really y- talk on yeah, for I, yeah. forever no, I, it's it's thank you for like it's lovely to talk about acting yeah, it, yeah. honestly for me this was really exciting It was a great episode, and I really learned for me a lot. as well. Then I, I, I have to confess, I was kind of nervous. Really, really, Cause, yeah, because as an actor, m- just the ones I saw a lot in interviews, they uh, not the great ones, but most of them have like this pretentious way of talking about acting, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I was like, am I like that? Am I, like, am I, am I, am I a pretentious <laughs> asshole? No, like, no. No, like no it's always been so. a pleasure, really. Thank yeah, you. Thank yeah. You. it's the same. And yeah. thank you again for doing this for Romania, man. It's it's amazing. Yeah, like you guys made me because I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a actual kind of Romanian Romania hater because I live here mm. and I know the potential of the country, and I'm like, oh, shit, things are not happening. Yeah, things are not happening as fast. As and then I be, see yeah. you two guys having fun, like young people coming from the west. And having fun in a country and seeing like this is the potential. It's not the same as in other places mm. that are much more like I don't know, uh, well established. But you can come from certain parts and appreciate that place much better than the people that live in that place. Yeah. So for me, it was like I see you guys and I'm learning. I'm like, dude, learn to love this place for what it is. Yes, at exactly. this point. So the level of influence you guys had and you m- will have and still have is amazing for people. Yeah, you know? thank so, you so much. So yeah, keep the keep 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 at it. Yeah, thank we you. will. We thank will. You, thank you so much. Honestly. No, thank you. Yeah, guys, this was uh, the this episode. Um, if you are tuning in from our second channel, Romaniac Live, don't forget to give it a like. Yes, please. And also subscribe for further episodes. Mm-hmm. And of course, also the people tuning in from the audio apps, Spotify, iTunes, uh, Amazon Music. Give yeah. it a review. Share it with people who would be interested. Please do. Yeah. And that was us from the Romaniac Show. And we see us in the next episode. Lada vedere. And ciao.